Active transport mechanisms utilizes energy to transport solutes from low concentration to high concentration. In the last class we discussed about passive transport where molecules are moved from high concentration to low concentration. Such favorable conditions may not exist for all the molecules. Some molecules like oxygen and carbon dioxide may only depend on passive transport because they have a favorable concentration gradient. Oxygen is highest in the atmosphere and it enters inside the lungs where by simple diffusion it enters the blood where the concentration is low. Again it trans gets transported in the blood to the tissues where oxygen crosses the cell membrane because inside concentration is low because of continuous utilization of oxygen and getting converted into carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide concentration is higher in the cell because this is where it is produced and it is going to diffuse back because both has high lipid solubility transported back to the lungs and again goes to the atmosphere where CO2 concentration is the least. So oxygen and carbon dioxide because of their high solubility and favorable concentration gradient throughout they just use passive diffusion and there are no transporters for oxygen or carbon dioxide but it is not possible for all the molecules for example sodium has a high concentration in extracellular fluid sodium enters inside the cell through sodium channels as facilitated diffusion during action potential and other function but bringing it back from intracellular to the extracellular fluid is the challenging work because here the concentration is higher and here the concentration is lower. So for that energy is used and these transporter which utilizes energy to move ions we call them as pumps, ion pumps. And this is sodium potassium pump because it transport both sodium and potassium. Three ions of sodium are pumped out and two ions of potassium are taken back. So this is why it's called a sodium potassium pump. Sodium potassium pump consumes a lot of energy. It takes about 30 to 70 percentage of energy of all the cell. The metabolically active cells like neuron which have many action potential has to maintain the ionic balance. They spend 70 percentage of their energy just for sodium potassium pump. This model shows how the sodium potassium pump operates. This is called as E1 E2 model. Here this is called as E1 state where the binding sites faces the intracellular site and these are called as E2 state where the binding site faces the extracellular site. And in the E1 state it has a high affinity for the sodium molecule so it sodium binds inside the binding sites and ATP also binds to its site and ATP gets hydrolyzed. So ATP becomes ADP and PI. This inorganic phosphate PI remains bound to the molecule and this energy is used to change from E1 to E2 state. The conformational change is where the energy is used. Once it becomes E2, its binding sites face the extracellular fluid, its sodium affinity comes down so all the sodium goes out and its affinity for potassium increases. Potassium comes and binds to its binding sites. And once potassium binds, the inorganic phosphate detached from the transporter and once inorganic phosphate detached, the molecule comes back to E1 state. So this cycle keeps on repeating. From E1, ATP binds, sodium binds, then it goes to E2 after ATP hydrolysis, then sodium is released, potassium binds, then PI is released, it comes back to E1. So this cycle is E1 E2 model and this is true for most of the other pumps also like calcium pump. Sodium potassium pump is electrogenic that means it transport three positive ion out of the cell and takes back only two positive ion. So this leaves the cell with one extra negative charge within the cell because it's loss of positivity in the cell. So that's why we call it as electrogenic. Some transporter transport equal number of positive charges in and out so we call them electroneutral. Next function is the membrane potential. Of course it maintains the potassium concentration that is essential for maintenance of membrane potential. We will discuss in the membrane potential lectures. Intracellular osmolarity is also maintained by sodium potassium pump. It removes the extra solutes which are keep on accumulating in the cell. It moves three ions outside and only takes two potassium ions. So it continuously extra solutes are getting removed thereby all water is also removed from the cell. 
This is essential for maintaining the intracellular osmolality. If sodium potassium pump is blocked, the cell will accumulate more amount of solutes and the cell will eventually swell and rupture. Membrane transport, it is essential for the sodium potassium transport and also it is essential for secondary active transporters also. Let's see what is that. Primary active transporter has the capacity to do ATP hydrolysis by the transporter itself. So there is a direct coupling of this mechanical activity and the energy released by the ATP molecule. Whereas a secondary active transporter, they don't have the ATP hydrolysis in the transporter function itself. So some other molecule utilizes energy and produces a gradient like electrochemical gradient in this case usually sodium and this gradient is used by the secondary active transporter to transport the molecule. Examples for primary active transporter are as we have seen sodium potassium pump and calcium pump exists in the cell membrane and also in the sarcoplasmic reticulum and the endoplasmic reticulum. One molecule of ATP is used to pump one ion of calcium in the cell membrane whereas one ATP pumps two calcium ion inside the sarcoplasmic reticulum and endoplasmic reticulum. Proton pumps are essential in kidneys and GIT. In the stomach they are responsible for maintaining the gastric acidity and if somebody has higher acidity in the stomach people treat them with omeprazole which is a drug inhibits the proton pump. Similarly sodium potassium pump also has an inhibitor. This is a group of drugs called as digitalis which is used for treatment of cardiac failure. The example for secondary active transporters are sodium glucose co-transporter. The co-transporter means both the molecules are transported in the same direction. Here the sodium is called as the driver ion. Sodium's concentration gradient is going to be used. Sodium is outside higher so this concentration gradient of sodium is utilized to transport one more molecule that is glucose. The same transporter carries both the molecules inside the cell. So that's why it's called as a co-transporter and it does not use energy directly that's why it's secondary active transport. If the ion move goes in opposite direction to the driver ion we call this as exchanger. In sodium calcium exchanger three ions are sodium enters inside the cell one ion of calcium goes out of the cell. And this is anion exchanger, here the driver ion is chloride, it's not sodium. And there is another exchanger, NBC, this is sodium bicarbonate exchanger, where sodium enters inside the cell and the bicarbonate ion goes out of the cell. You might have noticed that we already discussed one glucose transport in the passive mechanism, that is GLUT, glucose transporter. Now here we have one more mechanism, sodium glucose transporter. A same molecule might use different transport mechanisms because at different sites the requirements might differ. So today we are going to see one example transcellular glucose transport in the intestinal epithelium. This is luminal side of the intestine and this is the blood side, basolateral side. The glucose which is derived from the food is, has to be transported to the blood. Now if we keep only a passive transporter in the apical side, the passive transporter can only move down the concentration gradient and make both sides glucose concentration equal. Once this side glucose becomes lower it might come back again because glucose transporters are bidirectional. So this may not work. So here we have a secondary active transporter which transport sodium and glucose together inside the cell. Sodium enters inside along with glucose. Now once the glucose concentration inside is higher it moves down its concentration gradient to the basolateral slide through facilitated diffusion and the sodium has to be pumped out because the extracellular fluid sodium concentrations are very high. So intracellular concentration is going to be low. So for that here there is a sodium potassium pump and once this happens sodium and glucose are inside this is going to increase the osmolarity on this basal side so water also moves along with it and this is utilized in oral rehydration solution 
when there is diarrhea both sodium glucose and water are given together as a salt glucose solution and in this mechanism sodium and glucose will get transported through secondary active transporter and water also will move along with it once the osmolarity increases so both the water loss solute loss is restored and this mechanism water moving inside down the osmotic gradient is what we are going to discuss in our next class i will discuss some questions on osmosis in the next video thank you